First coast of the day, and right now my ADF, the Lost Coast, the Lost Coast are a superstitious, superstitious mountain. Yep, and we're gonna show you around the rest of the park today, and we'll see you in a little bit. We just got off Lost Coast or Superstition and Mountain, and it was actually a surprisingly intense roller because I was not expecting that. <laughs> yep, and you also got to think or uh, factor in that we j uh, just rode it backward because one of the coasters you have the option to ride forward or backward, and yeah. it's actually a different experience for backward. But um, we're going to ride it forward later, and we'll give you an update on how it feels for going forward. All right, we're back on in line for to try to get a forward ride on on Lost Coaster of uh, Superstitious Mountain. I'm, I'm just gonna call it Lost Coaster just for simplicity. Mm -hmm. But it, but while we're waiting in line, I just want to talk about our time, our, our ride, our quarter ball treads. I must say that thing was surprisingly full of airtime. I was not expecting that thing to be that insane. Yep. I, I wasn't expecting it to be that insane either, but we're, uh, like, you, like John said, we're on, we're in line for get a forward ride, and we were recommended to ride Cornball again in the very back for more airtime. So we'll give you an update on that, and we'll see you out in a little bit. All right, we we're heading back to our uh, Cornball to get on the to try to get on the back to see how it tests the airtime is, but. Uh, oh, I don't wait, I want to just talk about our time on uh, going back, uh, going forwards on the Lost Coaster. We got the front again, and it was, it was still, and I would say hey, I prefer it backwards because you just, just don't know what's coming. Yeah, I prefer the front so, because you can actually see what's going on with the with the uh, special effects inside. Yeah. But um, we're on our like like John said, we're on our way to. Cornball Express to get the back, and then we're gonna head to our next TRT, which is the Hoosier Hurricane. Yeah. Uh, we, I know what I to point out is that all the way coasters here are made by the same people, CCI. Custom coasters, and, and, and custom coasters, what? Custom coasters International. Custom coasters International, which actually ends up being in the company that, that, what, that eventually would split and become GCI and Gravity Group. Yep, but um, we're gonna like, but we're gonna get on uh, Cornball and get in the back, and, and we'll see you when we get off. Yeah, like I said, it both did. But then they actually bolted. They got cubbies in this one too. 
All right, we just got off of Cornball Express again, and we rode the very back. It's uh, second to back. Well, second to back, but it's still it's actually really f still forceful in the back, uh, in, in then the front too. Yeah, I, I I still prefer I still prefer the front because it's a lot smoother, but I still thought it was a lot better. I've I definitely had a lot more rougher experiences on in the back on winning coasters, aka the beast. So. But now we're going to the Hoosier Hurricane. Yep. And we're gonna ride the try and ride the front, and if we uh, we'll see you when we get off. All right, we just got off of of Hoosier Hurricane, and I would say it was not up to the hype that I that everyone said it is. I mean, I've seen multiple channels say say that Hoosier Hurricane is the best because they're here, but personally, I think Cornball is better. Uh, I, I still have a little bit of mixed feelings on it too. I mean, it's a decent coaster, but I don't, it's not the like John said. It's not the hype that they uh, called, said said it was. Yeah. But we're on on our way to a coaster that John's been wanting to ride for years, the Steel Hog. Yeah, I've been wanting it on Steel Hog for a long time. All right, man. I, I, well, just the type in general, an SNSL Loco. Yeah. So okay. We're gonna see how it is, and we'll see when we get off. All right, we took off Hoosier Hurricane in, in, for the second time in the front road. And I must say, the, the front is actually quite enjoyable. It's really fun. Yep, it's a different experience from where you ride, if you ride in the second car, uh, a lot smoother in the very front. Yeah. But, um, I'd say, we're gonna um, we're gonna explore the rest of the park here and wait for the Tiger Coaster to open their Schwarzkopf and their Schwarzkopf coaster, and we'll see you in a little bit. And that's our pronounce that there's no uh, e in it it's t-i-g apostrophe double r yeah so but again leave it in the comments if you if you can know what what is that what how you pronounce it but anyway it was really fun it, it, but one of the best kid family coasters i've ever been on at the uh, i haven't been on a sports cop since uh, 2007 when i first went to cedar point and rode the wildcat and that was uh, a little a but a uh, while a long while ago so yeah that's the first sports cop i've ridden in a cup in a lot of years yeah so, same here well i i rode the uh, wildcat uh, the same same coaster uh, a little later than he did but i i rode it i rode it just before they closed down back in 2000 i think 10 was when 2011 2011 was his last year here and it, it was still fun right and comparably i do say i prefer the sky Skyrocket model over the Wildcat model, you especially the Jet, Jetstar model. Uh, that's what I meant the Jetstar model. So no, so all right, the Jet, the Jetstar model. But especially since at the end of the Wildcat ones, I do remember and I don't wish to forget about it. The abrupt stop at the end. That one thing that the Jetstar we the noticed well for the Tiger in this case, but we don't know about any of the other Jetstars. The difference between it and Wildcat at Cedar Point that we noticed no abrupt sudden stop. Yeah. It's a little, also a little less airtime. I remember there was a bunch on 
on the Wildcat at least, there was a bunch, there, uh, every single time he went down the hill, there was a good, you get a, a nice little pop of air. Yep. There, but, no, nothing major, just a little floater. Yep, but we're uh, gonna check out, see what souvenirs they got while we're waiting for it to get in the Frankenstein's castle, and we'll see you in a little bit. These are rare shots that I'm getting it. Steel Hawk has already three times in a row without getting off. It, it was definitely, it was, and I must say, it's definitely the most forceful roller coaster I ever seen been on. Exactly, it's been one of the most forceful ones that I've been on for a for a while too. Yeah, as well, well as well, definitely the most forceful in the park. Mm -hmm. But I must say, when I was riding it, I noticed that there's a lot of track pieces sitting around that that are a preacher for our American. American Dry and Looping Coaster, if I'm right. Yep, American Dry or Looping, or they don't know what they're naming it. Yeah, American Dry or Looping, or the Triple Loop, they're not positive. But yeah, there's still a bunch of uh, stuff, uh, tracks still laying there. Yeah. Well, I don't know what, I, well, I, I don't know why they have a, haven't got a build yet. I think, I think they might have just got it over from Mexico, is my only guess. Now, for you guys who don't know that the, the American Dry or Looping Coaster, it's actually the coaster down with that infamous coaster down from Mexico called, oh, called Chimera. I don't know exactly where it's from, but I do. It was at it's uh sorry if we butcher the name of the the park that Chimera used to be from, but it was La, La Fiera Toltepec de Magico in Mexico City. And uh, if you've all heard the infamous story of Chimera already, we won't repeat it, but here, um, the short refresher. John will give you a short refresher. Yeah, essentially that the park was being very shady in terms of its maintenance as well as, uh, as just how they just were running the ride in general with running it faster than what they should have as well as not maintaining the, the train set the way they should have as well. A, a combination that, that well, along with oh, along with a mistranslation, just like Mindbender up in Canada. Yep. Uh, that, that combination caused the the back car to derail. I think killing three people and does and injuring dozens of, of other people. Yeah, and let's just say that IAPA came in for the inspection and they pretty much shut down La Fiera ap shortly afterward because they there were more than one ride that had shady deals going on. But um, we're gonna explore the rest of Indiana Beach and we'll see you in a little bit. All right, we're about to get on the train to, just uh, while we're waiting for the, for the uh, fascination tournament. Fascination tournament. So, we'll, so we so we'll just get on that and see, and so you get, so we can see what, how the train how, how what, what, see what you can see from the train.
voice from their grave. They call me Grim Reaper. I preside over this god. Get up off your doves and head on out to the fun capital of the Midwest. That's right, I'm talking Indiana Beach. Oh, baby, talk about fun in the sun. The rides, the shows, the highs, the lows, the dips, the flips, the eats, the feats. And if you thought you knew what skid was, will you strap yourself into Indiana Beach's newest hot stopper, the tiger? <laughs> That's Indiana Beach, brothers and sisters, on Lake Schaefer, just north of Monticello. Be there! All right, we we, we just got off, we got off the train as well as in between this and the train, we there was a, there was a, a, tor a tournament that for fascination. fascination tournament. It's basically just a ski ball bingo. Yeah, bingo, but it's like ski ball met bingo. Well, anyway, we're heading for the group. But the, while we're heading for the towards where the group group photo op is, I just want to talk about the train. It's pretty. It's nothing spectacular with anything, and it's a train. Although there is a, n a nice little surprise in one of the tunnels. Yep. Both. Well, I'm getting to we're gonna, uh, You'll see it in the video later, but you'll uh, see the surprise in one of the tunnels. Yeah. It, which was pretty neat. I mean, I was not expecting what it was. Well, we're heading for the photo op, and we'll see, see you in a bit after on what we're going to be doing next. Right here, are some tr more tracks. All our track pieces it is for the American Triple Loop, and right now it's just all over in pieces. Well, except for one of the loops. Yep. But, and partial is one of the second loops. Yeah. But trying to tell that these are the that this is one of the big loops, and then there's a second one that follows it, and then that's then that third loop. If it's anything like my mender, I heard the third loop is actually by far the most forceful of all of all the of all the elements. Mm -hmm. And if you look down, you can see some foundation spots where they're putting in the support. The uh, support. Yep. Yeah. I still hope they want to come on sports Yeah. I don't think they're going to do that. Like all right, we just got off the water, the water swing, and I, I, I'll be honest, that was it was scary. Yeah, because if you, if you it's similar to the Zephyr at like uh, Camp or at Kings Island, but it's the same type of system. But um, the chairs get enough force to where they go, where they can lean back a little. Well, I I think it's just how they they are connected together. If you if you look closely, if you look at closely, that all, the swings are, are the front of the one swing, swing is connected to the back of the other swing. So your the arms, uh, when the arms go up and down, you're swinging back and forth. While on like the Ze Zephyr at Kings Island, they're, you're you're connected to your own arm. So you're just. So you're you're just you're saying more level. Yeah, there was a couple times on there where we I almost jumped bumped the back of John's chair on the on the water swing. It was that, it was kind of sketchy, but it was that, still a good flat ride for for a pier park or for a boardwalk park like Indiana Beach. Yeah, it, uh, my big worry is that I had stuff in my pocket. And I was worried that it, it was going to tip over and stuff was going to fall out. Yeah, well, here's the, why we also that was scary. We were over water. Just, most of the part where we got freaked out, where we leaned back, was on the water. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to walk around, maybe try to get on something else before the boat ride. And then we'll, then we'll, and we'll see you in a bit. All right, we just got off the water, the water swing, and I, I, I'll be honest, that was, it was scary. Yeah, because if you, if you it's similar to the Zephyr at like uh, Camp, or at Kings Island, 
but it's the same type of system. But um, the chairs get enough work to where they go, where they can lean back a little. Well, I, I think it's just how they they are connected together. If you if you look closely, if you look at closely, that all, the swings are. The front of the one swing, swing is connected to the back of the other swing. So your the arms, uh, when the arms go up and down, you're swinging back and forth. While on like the Ze Zephyr at Kings Island, there you're you're connected to your own arm. So you're just so you're you're not swing, you're staying more level. Yeah, there was a couple times on there where we I almost jumped bumped the back and saw a chair on the on the water swing. It was that, it was kind of sketchy, but it was that, still a good flat ride for for a pier park or for a boardwalk park like Indiana Beach. Yeah, it, uh, my big worry is I had stuff in my pocket. And I was worried that it, it was going to tip over and stuff was going to fall out. Yeah, well, here's the, why we also that was scary. We were over water. Just, most of the part where we got freaked out, where we leaned back, was on the water. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to walk around, maybe try to get on something else before the boat ride, and then we'll, then we'll, and we'll see you in a bit. about ready to ship out on Shaver's Queen and from what I understand I can tell from watching on the sidelines today I, I'm probably going to go down to the other side of the lake way closer to the dam and then back and on the way back we're going to get some pretty cool night scenes of Indiana Beach yep we're going to try our best to get some good night shots and we'll see you when we get off the off the boat We just got off of the boat, the boat right at uh, on the on the lake, and I must say it was pretty cool just seeing Indiana Beach at night. All right, but what was really neat was the fact that that when we were passing the hat residential areas along the lake, that a lot of people were waving at us, uh, ringing bells. It was pretty cool that, uh, that there were people that were just interacting with the boat. Yep. But um, that does it here for us at Indiana Beach. Until next time, this is it Andy the Gemini Man? And, uh, and the Mr. Grider. And, and we'll see you in the next video.